for this meeting has begun. Thank you, Dominique. Um, so again, welcome everybody to Creating a Legacy Session 3, uh, the third workshop in the sustainability series from the Suicide Prevention Resource Center. I'm Julie Evan, and I'm really excited to um, have you all here today. So um, our other facilitators today are Sheila Krishnan, who is a Campus Prevention Specialist, and Patrice Post, who is a Senior Tribal Prevention Specialist. Um, Adam Chu, who is a Prevention Specialist, is also helping out behind the scenes today. So thank you so much for stepping up to help us out, Adam. Um, today's session, I'm just going to do a brief overview before we get started. Yeah. Um, Last time we talked about partnerships for sustainability with Jen Kennymore from Northwest Missouri State and Elaine DeMello from NAMI, New Hampshire. We looked at the deciding needs and prioritizing worksheets, and we discussed the importance of bringing your partners together to be part of sustainability planning. For homework, you hopefully got a chance to fill in at least the first worksheet and to bring your partners together to get their input, or if not, um, you were able to try filling out the prioritizing worksheet with the understanding that that may change later on once you meet with your partner. So today we're going to start by seeing if there are any questions or reflections about those worksheets um, that you did for homework and about bringing the partners together if you got to do so. Then we're going to look at how to use infrastructure for sustainability. Um, so the topics seem to be really different depending on your type of grant setting, whether you are a tribal grantee, campus grantee, or state grantee. So we're going to be actually breaking into small groups by grant type during the webinar itself. And if you haven't done this before, I just think it's very uh, cool, it's the sort of webinar magic. I get very excited about it. Then we'll talk about how to fill in gaps of what might be missing from your priority list. And we'll have a chance to think about what strategies to use with what objectives. You'll have the opportunity to get group feedback on how to address um, some roadblocks that might come up. So basically, in this sustainability planning model, last time we covered step three. Oh, sorry. I'm new to this drawing tool piece. <laughs> we covered step three. There we go. And four. I feel like I'm first grader with my drawing here, so I apologize. Um, and this time, we will be covering steps 5A, 5B, and 6. For those of you who are visual learners out there, like myself. So to start us off, I'm curious to hear from folks who um, have been participating in the series so far whether you were able to bring your partners together. And here's where the hand raise function comes in. So if you have been able to bring your partners together to help you plan for sustainability, um, please go ahead and raise your hand. We recognize that not everybody was able to do that. So I'm just curious to see. Great. I see that um, Jennifer from Illinois is able to do that. Anyone else? from Kentucky, wonderful. So I'm just curious, um, maybe starting with Jennifer, if you have any reflections about how that was, what that process was like to bring them together. Sure, we had um, actually had a, a meeting scheduled with our leaders that had to be postponed, but we had some other avenues to work with other stakeholders like our grantees and our federal partners and um, really were able to um, come up with some ideas that we had not even thought about. And it was exciting just to hear about some <clears throat> opportunities that we could really implement in this last year of our grant that could um, really gr leave the groundwork for, um, you know, after the grant. And so we were able to talk about one of our specific activities that we really would like to keep, and that's our statewide conference, and being able to brainstorm on um, not only other ways to collaborate with others, but identify some of those other people that we could collaborate with. Wonderful. Great. 
anyone else want to um, say anything about if you were able to do the prioritizing and deciding need and or deciding needs worksheets and how that went? I think when we were going through that process of prioritizing, I realized that I probably need to take a step back and really look at, have an internal discussion with our senior staff to even you know, to make sure I'm on the same page with them before I take our team further through that, that process of prioritizing. And so it was, again, just a, a learning experience that as we were excited to think about, you know, what we would pr prioritize, I, it was a kind of a reality of, that. Like, hold on, maybe I need, <laughs> I, I need to go back and, and just talk internally with our folks and um, make sure you know, I've made this assumption that we will continue and move on, and um, I just need to make sure that internally I have that support. Great. Thank you, Jennifer. That's really helpful um, to hear, and I'm, hopefully that will be of use to other folks, too. So, um, and feel free to also change the icon next to you so you don't have the hand raised on anymore. Does anyone else want, ha, want to share any reflections about bringing your, um, sorry, about doing the prioritizing worksheets or the deciding needs worksheets? If you had any reflections wow. about those or any questions? Okay, well, hearing none, going to move us on to the next part. We're going to, in a moment, break into small groups. And as I said before, this is because the types of infrastructure that people um, would use, the different kinds of infrastructure strategies that people would use seem to be very, very different depending on the type of grant and the grant setting. So we wanted to break out into a tribal group, a campus group, and a state group. And we thought that that might be especially useful for folks. Uh, as we transition into these groups, and we're in the groups, if for some reason your phone drops off, which it should not, but if it does, just call back in, and Dominique will reassign you to the appropriate the small groups, uh, how they were useful, or anything that you might want to learn more about in the future from your PS or from SPRC. And also feel free to remute your line at this point if you don't want to say anything aloud so that we can eliminate some of the background noise. And again, the mute button's at the top of your screen on the computer whether you're muted or not, if the phone icon next to your name on the status list has a, a little phone or a handset with a red thing through it. All right, well, hearing nothing, we're going to move on just a second. But again, I wanted to say thank you to, your, to our presenters who are going to feel free to take off now or feel free to stick around if you'd like to. So Cindy, Kristen, Stephanie, uh, Steve, Megan, Jan, and Melissa, thank you so much. So we're going to move on to talking about some of our worksheets. So the next worksheet that uh, can take you a little bit further in the process of planning for sustainability is around addressing gaps. And basically, the this is to take those priorities that you decided, uh, the objectives that you decided were high priorities, and figure out, OK, we have those. We're going to put those aside for a moment. And we're going to do action planning on that. And Sheila's going to address that in just a few minutes. But the ones that we decided were a low priority, we want to think about, should we address those in a different way? So. The Addressing Gaps worksheet, you can look at the prioritizing worksheet where you said, OK, it's 
it's a high priority or low priority. So in this example that I have up, this particular one was a low priority. And this outcome was not really sufficiently being addressed in other ways, but the outcome that this example had was providing effective mental health treatment. And if you remember the comprehensive approach that we keep talking about, these are the different aspects of suicide prevention that in this example, you want to try and hit many of these, if not all of them, rather than just putting all your eggs in one basket. So in this case, the providing effective mental health treatment was not sufficiently being addressed through any other objective. So even though this particular objective of training 350 mental health providers across the county in, e in clinical training ABC was not effective because not a lot of people were taking the training and uh, in order to, and it's a low priority for sustainability because not a lot of people have been taking it and the training will be too expensive and so therefore more people won't take it in the future if it continues in this form. Uh, even though that objective of training 350 mental health providers is not a high priority, providing effective mental health treatment still is a high priority. So from the prioritizing your work worksheet, um, the next step is to take, so from this worksheet, uh, the next step is to take that outcome and move it to, and move it into the addressing high priority outcome gaps worksheet. You can see the arrows on the screen, so transferring it from one worksheet to the next. And then figuring out, okay, do we want to focus on this outcome? Is it a priority? And we already said yes. So how are we going to address this in a different and more effective way to get that piece of the comprehensive approach, but the previous objective, the previous approach that we were using was not working? So in this example, providing effective mental health treatment. So why focus on this outcome? Is it a priority? Yes, because people are attempting multiple times or they're coming back to, this is a campus example, they're coming back to campus before they're ready. So the mental health treatment needs to be effective because either it's not effective because they're not, because they're attempting multiple times, perhaps in this case, even though they're in treatment, or they're coming back to campus before they're ready so they're going to need intensive mental health services. So in this example, they created a new SMART objective by January 2015, try to get buy-in from the local community mental health center that this campus refers to most often and the local hospital to train their relevant staff. So before the objective was a little bit too large and it was not happening to train 350 providers, but this is a slightly more modest goal for sustainability. So perhaps with limited funding, this can still happen Whereas they're, they're trying to pick a reasonable goal with the reduced funds that they will have after the grant. Second part of this worksheet is a logic model. And some people hear the term logic model and they get a little bit nervous, but logic model is extremely helpful and it doesn't have to be complicated. This is really to just help you figure out the foundation for your new objective or objectives. So in this case, they said, OK, we're putting in the inputs of wellness center staff time and life skills curriculum. So this is different from the previous example of training mental health staff. This is an attempt to um, better serve the students on campus through slightly more upstream approaches. You can see that the different pieces of the logic model, they're going to offer life skills classes at the counseling center. They're going to try and reach about 40 students a year. Um, that will result in increases in knowledge and confidence in dealing with life crises. They'll apply what they've learned, and they'll better be able to prevent the crises or deal with them with, when, they, when 
those crises arise, overall it will reduce suicidal behavior on campus. And you can see that there are also listed data sources to document these. You may not be able to do um, all of these data pieces, but you may be able to do some of them. So you may not be able to take the time to go through the Counseling Center urgent appointment log to see are the students who have gone to these classes having fewer urgent appointments, but you may be able to document through a post-class evaluation like a survey monkey, do students feel that they have an increase in knowledge and confidence when dealing with life crises. You may not be able to do the follow-up, but you may be able to at least have that attendance record. Yes, we did reach our goal number of students. Ideally, you will be able to do all of these pieces. So this is just an example of a logic model to really help you think through if we're creating a new objective, what is the logic behind it? Is this really going to get us where we want it to go? The second part of the Adjusting Gap worksheet is if you feel that there are pieces of your comprehensive approach that are not being adequately addressed by your current grant, by your current objectives, sorry, and you have the capacity to add outcomes or objectives, that you can fill in this second part. The key is that you don't have to add new objectives. This is just if you can. In this case, they put in develop life skills, and this is the example that I was using with the logic model. So their focus was on trying to reduce the need for mental health appointments and to have less of a wait time to get one by moving further upstream and offering these life skills classes. So do folks have questions about the uh, the addressing gaps worksheet and the logic model. I realize this looks a little bit theoretical at this point. All right, well, hearing none, I'm going to turn it over to Sheila, who's going to talk about the action planning worksheet. Sounds good. Thanks, Julie. Um, so as Julie just mentioned, um, she just went over a few of the worksheets that we've had you or asked you to complete um, over the last few weeks of so being in the um, training series. Um, and the last step of um, going into developing your sustainability action plan um, is really going back to some of those worksheets and taking the objectives um, and developing some sustainability action steps um, as to figuring out sort of the practical things that you would need to do um, to figure out um, how you're going to achieve this strategy. So, um, sorry. so as you'll see here, um, really the first step is to, in the Sustainability Action Plan Part 1, um, which you'll, you'll see in the workbook, um, the first step is to go back to your prioritizing worksheet um, and take your high priority objectives um, that you set up for sustainability. So. Um, in the example on the slide, you'll see that we took um, the objective to train 50 youth in ABC training um, from the prioritizing worksheet and just plugging it in um, right into uh, the sustainability action plan. Um, and when you go to that worksheet, you'll see that um, for each of the objectives, um, the next question is what is needed for sustainability in terms of resources, tools, and partners. Um, so thinking a bit concretely about um, how um, how will you get those um, how will you get this accomplished um, and what you need to have that done? Um, the second piece of the sustainability action plan is part two, where you go back to the addressing gaps worksheet, um, where you look at outcomes um, that might need new objectives for them. So in this case, um, taking um, the new objectives so. Uh, about training, um, or sorry, um, to get buy-in from the local community um, and plugging that in into um, part two um, where it's a high priority objective. Um, so these are some of the questions that I was mentioning that you'll see on the sustainability action plan worksheet. Um, so making sure that you think through um, what is actually needed for sustainability to happen, 
Um, if, you, if, if it involves other people, um, who do you need? To, who support do you need to have? Um, what strategies will you use? Um, what assumptions are you making about the strategy? Um, about why it work, might work or not work? Um, and how, how will you put the strategy into action? So these are, um, along with the questions, um, there are some empty boxes um, that allow you to really write down the action steps um, for each objective um, for sustainability. So um, just, um, developing, you know, what exactly needs to be done, um, who the lead um, should be. Um, this should ideally be somebody who's on the grant um, team or on your project staff. Um, and then in the column where it asks for team members or others involved, um, this could be people who are on your advisory board um, or other partners that you've identified um, who do need to have a role in moving some of these things forward, um, but maybe there's somebody on the team um, that will be coordinating um, either the communication with other partners um, or kind of overseeing um, that this, these steps move forward. Um, also having a timeline, so a date when you plan to begin working on this by um, and when you'd like to complete it by. Um, you just, again, um, this, all of this is um, really helping you become more concrete um, in terms of the steps um, that you're going to take to move this forward and then any other notes um, that you need to include as well. So a few things um, about the sustainability action plan I think that we've heard um, in terms of maybe common roadblocks um, or things um, that people have run into before. Um, so again, as I mentioned, making sure that the lead is really somebody who's on the team um, just so that you can keep, um, keep up to date with what's going on with that step, so that there's somebody who has responsibility um, for communicating with partners and moving it forward. Um, the other thing about this document um, is that you will probably need to come back um, and revise it at some point, um, make sure that this is a living document um, and that um, it's a tool that's really helpful um, for you to keep track of um, your sustainability steps and your action plan and all the hard work that you've put into going back into the worksheets um, and um, reviewing your goals and objectives. Um, and lastly, this is also another tool um, that's helpful to communicate with your um, other grant team staff, um, with any partners, with your um, advisory board. This might be something you use to sort of advocate for sustainability, um, for resources, um, it's sort of an evaluation tool um, as well. So however um, you see, see it best um, helping your case, um, Feel free to use it that way. And I think it's also a great um, thing once you do have your sustainability action plan filled out to share it with your project officer at SAMHSA um, and with your prevention specialist at SPRC, um, either if you'd like to get feedback um, or just to let them know that um, these are the strategies that you've sort of reviewed and decided upon um, as helping your efforts in sustainability. Um, and just to revisit again, um, the sustainability planning model that Julie had introduced at the beginning, um, these are all of the steps sort of involved um, in the sustainability um, planning model. But I think what we were just talking about um, is around step six, where you're actually creating concrete steps um, related to each strategy and thinking through um, maybe what some of the roadblocks roadblock might be um, that serve as barriers. Um, and you know, what are some of the other resources and partners that you need to put your plan into action. Um, if you visited the private pages um, on the FBOC website, you'll see a few completed sustainability action worksheets and plans. Um, and so this is one from the state of Nevada. Um, and you can see um, it might be a little bit hard to see on the slide, but I just wanted to um, give everyone a heads up that these um, do exist on the FCRC website. You can take a look at them after. Um, but you can see how they've walked through plugging in their objectives um, and then thinking through um, all of the details that they need about moving it forward and who's going to take responsibility for them. Um, this is another example that you'll find up there as well. Um, there um, are a few campus examples and a tribal example as well. Um, yep, 
Um, and before we move along, I guess um, I'll turn it back over to Julie to talk about some of the strategies and roadblocks. Great. Thanks, Sheila. I just wanted to go back for just a quick second to to look at the sustainability planning model and to say, just to highlight Sheila's point about it being a living document. So even though you're doing your action planning in step six, you may find that as you're doing it that um, you need to go back and rethink your priorities if you're coming up against something where you're thinking, well, this is the this is the strategy that we want to take or this is the objective that we want to approach, but we don't actually have the resources that we can use to do that. Well, you may need to go back and reprioritize, et cetera. So uh, Dominique, can you switch us over to the Notepad view? Thank you. So I'm curious to hear from all of you what strategies you're thinking of and also, if you want to share with the group and get any group feedback about any um, about those strategies or any roadblocks that you might encounter or that you're already encountering, I invite you to do that now and maybe first focusing on are there resources or tools that you need to gain or to maintain for sustainability? And this is not even though we've been talking about infrastructure today, this is not only with respect to infrastructure, although certainly feel free to incorporate that. But as you're doing the action planning piece of the worksheet, thinking about all the strategies we've discussed so far, the communications, partnerships, infrastructure, as well as any others to share how you're thinking about gaining or maintaining resources. You can feel free to speak out loud if you feel comfortable doing that. Um, or raise your hand and I can call on you if you're not sure when to jump in. And you can also uh, chat it into the chat box if that's easier. So in thinking about sustainability and some of your different program pieces, how will you gain or maintain resources and tools? What are your what are you thinking of right now, even if it's not a fully fledged idea? I have a question for the group. Um, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, this go is, ahead, um, Barbara. This is Barbara Hi. Uh, from UW Milwaukee. So um, I'm thinking about sustainability, and I can kind of envision how to keep our, oh, some of the resources we have going, they're pretty set, how to keep our gatekeeper training going that was kind of there already, you know, some of those things. The part that I am having the absolute hardest time with, and even getting it going in the first place, frankly, is um, the part where we want to really engage our students uh, on campus in mental wellness and um, mental health advocacy and stigma reduction and suicide prevention efforts. And I'm wondering, especially now um, thinking about sustainability, if other campuses or, or other grantees have ideas um, regarding how to keep sort of this ever-changing constituency group um, engaged over the coming years. Great question. Does anybody have any uh, thoughts for Barbara? Yeah, this see is Kathy. Kathy. Go ahead, Hi. Kathy. Yeah, we have this um, terrific person in our state, Vanessa, who has the state GLS grant, who actually did a lot of work in high schools with mentoring and student leaders. And we're a community college, pretty large one, 17,000. So we're now working on identifying those high school students that were already trained in sources of strength as leaders, and we're going to pair them with mentors when they get to our campus. And I think students do really get um, a lot of benefit. Not only do they make connection, but I think that is going to be a path to sustainability for us. I do believe it will work well if we put all the work in. So if you have anyone who uh, can bring some sources of strength programs and mentoring and leadership, uh, I think that's a really good way. If you can start that in the high schools, maybe not as probable for universities, but certainly it is for local colleges. 
Uh, that's worked very effectively for us. Great. Thank you, Kathy. Welcome. Um, Rachel also chatted in the question of whether you have a student club or organization like Active Minds. So that's another approach that folks can take. Um, it sounded like, Kelly, maybe you were going to share something a moment ago on this question. No? OK. Um, does anybody else have any thoughts for Barbara before we move on to some more um, ideas or questions? Thank you. I think that's a really idea. <laughs> great. I think it's a really interesting idea that um, Kathy brought up to try and work with uh, rising freshmen to um, or incoming students to identify future leaders from campus. Hey, so I, I hello. Go ahead. Yes. Um, I just wanted to um, share something. Um, I, I agree with Rachel. Uh, looking into student organizations such as Active Minds is a good idea. Uh, informing coalitions. Um, uh, it would be really good to have um, student body representatives, uh, representatives on board. Um, Active Minds are very, um, well, at least my experience has been, <laughs> very happy to get involved. And uh, their work is um, in the same area. Um, so they, they are very eager to partner up. Um, they're also very helpful um, in terms of um, actual programming with coming up with ideas and uh, that are really um, applicable to, to the student population. So again, just uh, to reinforce what Rachel said, uh, partnering up with student orgs is a, probably a good idea. Great. Thank you. Um, Michelle Azalea was uh, typing in a little bit more about sources of strength and how it's working there in Georgia, so that's fabulous. Um, Rachel also talked about collaborating with various departments on their community college campus, particularly student activities. Um, Linda, do you want to say a little bit more? I don't know if you were raising your hand for to share what you were sharing about the mental yeah, health that, blog that, or. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that it was. I, I know it just had to do with the visibility from the you know advertising we've done with the grant. So our uh, a group of business students, uh, graduating seniors who had to do a capstone project, just uh, like all the things that we've done with the grant, and they, uh, as business majors, started a, a frog speak blog. And of course, they're a marketing major, so it's marketed beautifully. And they had uh, they sponsored events that to promote their blog, and they've uh, already gotten over 200 students to agree to to post their mental health stories. It's curated by students, but they have agreed to let us look uh, over something they find problematic. So, for example, if somebody posted something that was traumatizing, we would um, you know probably ask them to cut it back a little bit. But all the stories are really positive about how getting help was okay, and. Uh, and uh, we're just going to keep doing anything we can to keep nurturing their efforts. Um, and, uh, and hopefully, as, as all student organizations, they need a lot of sort of care and feeding so they don't dry up when the people graduate. But uh, we're excited about it so far. That's great. That's a really great example of um, getting the students involved for sustainability. I'm curious to hear um, maybe some, from some of the folks who were in the tribal breakout group about some of the efforts you're thinking about for sustainability, um, either how you would gain or maintain resources and tools, or um, you know maybe some of your partnership pieces, so how you'd work with um, existing partners, or which new ones that you're thinking about approaching. Um, my name is Liz, and I work for the Indian Center in Lincoln, Nebraska. And in Lincoln, there's um, three different sites. There's a site in Scotts Bluffs, there's a, site, there's a site in Lincoln, and there's a site in Omaha. And I'm located in Omaha. And each site is a little different um, for what, what we've 
each community is different. So I can't speak for Scotts Bluffs or Lincoln, but I can speak for Omaha. And um, for me, I, I work in an urban setting. I don't work for a tribe, um, so but my focus is towards Native Americans. And uh, we here when the grant started, there was already a suicide um, prevention program um, that was here, but they didn't do the same exact thing that we did. And it was kind of a struggle to gr develop a partnership with them because I, I'm, I'm not sure why it was hard, but I would always reach out to them. They seemed really leery. But we finally were able to establish that partnership. And once we were able to, um, we were able to do a whole lot more. So um, having that partnership with the other suicide prevention program uh, here in Omaha that focuses towards Native Americans, um, we were able to do a whole lot more together. That's great. And in terms of sustainability, is there anything that you need to do with that partnership to keep it going? Do you think it'll keep going regardless? Well, um, I well, what we are doing right now, um, we had a coalition that we were attending together, but we're right now is we're trying to develop an, a new um, coalition together. So we're meeting together to find out the objectives and outcomes that we want to focus on for the community specifically in Omaha, and it's going to be specifically for Native Americans. So I think with us um, working on that, I think that's going to increase sustainability for the Omaha area for Native Americans. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Do other folks want to share uh, what they're working on, either in terms of partnerships or what are your initial thoughts about how to gain or maintain resources? Um, or also thinking about who you might need to keep informed or how you might need to sell um, suicide prevention going forward to, you know, similar to how we were talking about if you were at our m first meeting a couple of weeks or a couple of months ago at this point um, with that kind of how do you craft your communication message and who do you need to keep informed and get on board. Um, Rachel is typing in that uh, in terms of partnerships, they're using their relationship with a local mental health agency to create a community coalition. And that's really important, especially for community college. So that's great. I see some other folks are typing in too. I know that in our small group breakout in the state group, um, the presenters were talking about really working with their legislators to get some um, to work with a coalition to get some laws passed, and so really needing to bring in the data to support their arguments and um, to keep that front and center on the radar screen of folks. And. I'm sorry, it's uh, Liz. It seems like maybe there's some trouble hearing. Is this any better? The advisory board at um, Saginaw State Valley University is uh, Jenny is writing in that that will be really important and b expanding beyond community mental health to include local law enforcement, hospitals, and homeless coalition. Yeah, that's really important as well. What about working with uh, tribal councils? Are any folks doing that in order to move things forward for sustainability? Or is that something that you're thinking about? Working with other state departments. I know some folks are at the Department of Public Health. I don't know if you're trying to partner with the Office of Juvenile Justice or if that's uh, or trying to partner with mental health. 
Um, Jonathan is writing that they've been increasing their student involvement on their campus by integrating the marketing majors to um, do a project where students take photos around campus with positive engagement statements, encouragement statements, sorry, and that the turnout is really good. That's a wonderful effort. Thank you. I see Liz typing in. Brandy, I don't mean to put you on the spot. Do you want to share anything about how you are thinking about sustainability? I know you're moving into a new area in your grant. Um, it may not be the right. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I'm here. Sorry. It's, I was reading okay. something else. Email had popped up. I had to take care of it. Okay. Um, we're in Alabama, we're just kind of looking at moving into some um, juvenile justice centers um, this next year in our grant. We're also looking at working on, um, I guess you would call them the small P's within our um, local education agencies. We know that it's kind of a long shot right now to get some a major piece of the um, pass through our Board of Education that all schools, what faculty and staff would have to attend so many hours per training each year. So we're going to work with local schools to try to get um, them on board to have at least some type of training every year within their local education agency. Great. Thank you, Brandy. So it's also helpful to think about what barriers you might encounter um, in terms of thinking through you know, how you can leverage folks, how you can gain and maintain tools, et cetera. And we're going to move on in just a second, but I I've got one more note from one of the breakout groups that they were talking about the need to keep, one of the presenters was talking about the need to keep their tribal council informed and engaged. So that might be through bringing in information about what's going on. It might be information about the number of attempts. Um, it may be information about how the program is impacting people, et cetera. So, I think that that's a really important group. Um, and we had also talked previously about using champions to help keep those folks informed and engaged. So maybe if there's a tribal elder who you get to be one of your champions, and they can really speak up to the tribal council to bring that more to their attention as well. So, uh, someone, I think it was one of our breakout speakers said, you know. Sometimes people pay more attention if you have somebody from outside of your program coming in to, to share that rather than you saying it yourself, that sometimes the outside folks can be a little bit more attention getting. Does anybody else want to share anything or anything from any of the breakouts, um, including maybe Sheila or Patrice, anything that you think might be helpful or relevant from your breakout? Um, this is Sheila. I think one thing we talked about in the campus um, breakout was sometimes communicating with administrators um, just really depends so much on the individual relationships and personalities and size and setting um, of the campus. So it's very um, locally specific. Um, and we discussed also a bit about where the suicide prog prevention program is located, so whether it's in health promotion or another department. And, how it's important for several different partners to have um, some ownership or say um, in moving it forward. That's great. And I think that can translate to other settings as well. So in a state setting, for example, even though the program might be housed in public health, trying to find a way to get some folks from education or from mental health or juvenile justice to be you know, bought in and engaged so these are important things to think about as you're creating those action plans that we were talking about, thinking through who to keep informed, who are you going to leverage, how are you going to gain, maintain resources and tools. So there's somewhere that can offer things in kind to you so you don't have to pay for um, meeting space, or you can get food donated so that that's not a cost, or printing, things like that. Even, even some of these smaller things can really be helpful in helping to sustain things. And thinking through the barriers, what are some barriers that you might encounter, and trying to anticipate a little bit of how you might overcome them or what 
what different tactics you might take. Of course, some of that just has to happen in real time. Thank so thank you so much. Oh, go ahead. This is Patrice. I just wanted to um, apologize. I, the phone thing keeps getting me caught off guard, so I wasn't allowed to chime in. Um, one of the things from the tribal breakout that was really, I think, very poignant is about patience um, and making sure, or not making sure, but allowing time to build the relationships because this is, it's, a, it's a constant and, and a continuous process. And making sure that um, you know, even for future grantees or future grants, that people remember that they need to have that patience. Thank you, Patrice. That's a really helpful point, and I think that that really holds true across settings as well. So I'm going to move us on now to our wrap-up, because we just have uh, one minute left. So Dominique, thank you all for participating in the discussion. And if you have more thoughts, uh, feel free to email the group afterwards or keep chatting them in. So next meeting is our last one. Um, so Thank you all for participating as much as you've been able to so far. Uh, it's the same time. It's August 19th, two weeks from today. If you are able to, in between now and then, we'd love for you to fill out the Addressing Gaps worksheet. And that may be very brief for some of you. And then to also start to fill in a draft of your sustainability action plan. So those parts one and two, they're, they're very similar. It's just being able to draw from the um, both the prioritizing worksheet and the addressing gaps worksheet to create your action plans. And then if you can send us your action plan, it can be in draft form by August 14th, we'll have a chance to pull out some of the themes and to have a little bit more helpful group discussions um, for everybody to give feedback and to get feedback on your action plans and your sustainability sustainability strategies. If there's somewhere where you're thinking, hmm, I'm not sure about this, I, I feel a little stuck here, um, we're going to get together as a group to give some feedback. Um, lastly, just a reminder about the evaluation. Please continue to fill those out. They've been really helpful for us to tweak the sessions as we go along, and especially helpful for next year um, if we do this sustainability workshop series again to help us improve and continue to provide the best possible TA that we can. So thank you all so much. Have a wonderful rest of your day, and hopefully we will talk to you in two weeks. Feel free to email us or your prevention specialist if you have any questions.